Good afternoon. Um, my name is Zafar Iqbal. Today is Monday, 24th of July, 2023. And uh, we're going to talk about the strategic leadership. LO2, understanding how leadership influences individuals, teams, and the organization. The reason why we are looking at the LO2 is that we missed uh, the Thursday session. We should have um, uh, done on uh, Thursday, but due to um, having our um, annual um, graduation ceremony, we were unable to carry out this LO2. So it's uh, today we have. Um, at the time to do this and um, we'll um, do the LO2 today and the LO2 uh, will catch up uh, with the other LO3 and 4. Okay, so thank you very much for bearing with us. So, so let's start um, with understanding how leadership influences individuals, uh, teams and the organization. First of all, uh, what we're going to cover in, uh, in this um, uh, lesson is uh, we're going to talk about work groups and teams. We we'll need to talk about the different types of um, uh, groups, different types of uh, teams. Uh, we need to talk about uh, the differences between the teams, what are teams, what are the operational uh, differences, uh, the characteristics of um, work groups and teams, and factors contributing to group cohesiveness and performance, advantages and disadvantages of forming into groups, uh, compatibility, we're going to look at the, the team formation, team development, and cultural and, um, you know, the differences uh, between creative leadership and team development. So this is the, um, the food for today. So let's start, um, uh, you know, with, with, our, um, with our work. We may, uh, you may know, the, you know, because you're working in uh, organizations, you're working in, I'm sure you're working in teams, uh, yeah, so you can tell me what is a team, um, you know. To me, a team is um, when people get together and together everybody achieves more. That's the basic underlying factor of a team, okay? So the team, how we define it or how the, the, um, the organizational writers have defined a team is it's a group of people who perform interdependent tasks. Uh, to work towards accomplished uh, goal, specific objectives, okay? A team is uh, a collection of people, in other words, okay? Uh, people getting together with a common um, with a common goal. They have a common mission to achieve, right? Uh, for example, a football team has a common objective to win or a cricket team or um, uh, another you know, team. So the individuals comprising different people of uh, coming together with a common objective, with a common goal, and they want to um, make sure that they achieve more because they have a, a goal ahead of them, okay? These are just not individuals. They are not compatible, uh, but they work together uh, to become compatible in the interests of their own and make sure that they are um, liking each other and they act um, together, okay? Through different attitudes, perceptions, and likings, and same, you know, try and get the same interest, if not, uh, you know, similar, okay. So what's a group? Um, having looked at the, the team, uh, what is a group? A group is just a collection of people, right? It's just a, an assemblage of people uh, with, um, you know, different uh, types of people coming together with the two or more people coming together. Um, they um, may be having an objective to achieve uh, the objective of their organization or they may have a um, you know, um, not an um, ob objective of an organization, but it's a collection of people. They are different in size. They may be have a different in goals or maybe they have a, you know, common goals. They, are, um, they have different norms or maybe they have the same norms, structure, they um, strolls and interaction and collective um, identity. So basically it's a collection of people and um, it's a collection of individuals who come together uh, to um, achieve some kind of objectives of the organization. So this is a group and a team is, uh, so when we say a team, this is also a team is a group of people who are interdependent, right? A group is a people who do clear the objectives together. Now there are different types of groups. Now they, 
some groups are called uh, formal groups and the other groups are called informal groups. Now, the formal groups are groups that are formed um, deliberately, intentionally by the management of an organization with the aim of serving an organizational objective, clear line of, um, you know, demarcation, clear line of responsibility, clear line of roles, and they know, everybody knows what they, uh, they're doing. They have uh, you know, clear lines of communication. Informal groups are um, groups that uh, have just uh, formed into a kind of a social um, uh, type of um, group. They have, um, you know, they have uh, uh, no um, common interest in, in themselves uh, or social needs. Maybe they have um, mutual in interaction or mutual attraction, right? They have just got together uh, for some kind of a purpose, uh, but you know there is no clear line of uh, indication or clear line of responsibility. These groups jump, just come up together spontaneously. In other words, you know because uh, they have you know just come together to have a common interest, some kind of social interest or social needs, or you know with a kind of friendship. So they become uh, informal groups. So you can see a clear distinction between the informal groups and a formal groups. Okay, what are the reasons for group formation? You know, we may we may ask the reasons for group formation are different for different people, right? They can be reason for personal uh, characteristics, individual um, uh, forming two groups because of their uh, attitudes or similar beliefs or um, you know they have a similar interests uh, people will have individuals will have a similar goals they require a similar kind of uh, achievement maybe uh, maybe they'll um, you know have a kind of um, uh, a group may have a similar influence or power or um, you know uh, some kind of um, promotion to do or they'll have some kind of opportunity for interaction, which means that the employees of an organization are given opportunity to interact with one another, and they find that they have many things in similar, uh, which can create a group. Okay, so we can say the reasons for a group are different uh, reasons for a group. They can be for personal characteristics, they can be for personal interests and goals, influence and power, and opportunity for interaction. Okay. Now let's uh, look um, critically um, at the relationship between leaders of work group and leaders of teams. Now 2.1 uh, you know, asks uh, you to compare the relationship between leaders of work and leaders of teams. Now let's, let's have a look, okay? Although groups and teams are different, there are some similarities, there are some uh, common uh, goals that they are trying to achieve. So group, versus teams, not the group, as you know, the groups and teams are, uh, you know, interchangeably used. The groups and teams are words that are interchangeably used um, in uh, most of the, the language, but there are differences between these words, okay? So for example, uh, when you're talking about a football team, uh, not a football group, i.e. the football team has a common, uh, common goal, right? Uh, the common objective, in other words, or a cricket team, they have a common things to aim, whereas a group doesn't have a, a common uh, thing to aim, okay? And the main difference is that the team's um, strength or focus depends on uh, the purpose and the, how can they achieve and how they can help with um, the help of the other individual, how they can do that together with one another, or how can they do it together to achieve a successful uh, team, right? But the group, on the other hand, uh, comes together, uh, just uh, gathering for a large number of people or a cohesive willingness to uh, carry out a focused action, maybe for a political purpose, maybe for political agitation, maybe political, but they don't have that particular cohesiveness uh, as, as in a team, okay? Um, so therefore, there are differences um, we have to understand between individuals and between a group. Uh, we may say that the group is a number of individuals forming a unit, forming a, um, a unit for a reason, and the team is a collection of accomplished people coming together uh, for a common goal that needs completion. Okay, so these are some kind of differences we may need to remember. 
Now, what are the differences between a work group and uh, work teams? Now, work uh, a team, of course, in the business world, right? We work in uh, work teams and we work in work group. A work group is something um, composed of individuals, two or more individuals who are interdependent in their accomplishment and may or may not work in the same department, okay? So they may work in a group, but they may work in different departments. But work team is, is the people coming together or members who are interdependent on specific common goal to produce an end result for their business, i.e. the work team. They have a, a common uh, thread between uh, a team together and share the common values and the outcomes and the group is more independent of each other. Okay. Another difference is, is the in the work team is the leader acts as a facilitator. The members uh, have um, active participation in the discussion and eventual outcome. The team members uh, decide on the disbursement of work assignment, whereas in the work group, the leader dominates and controls the group. The leader is apparent, okay, and will conduct the meetings. The leader usually assigns work to the members, so we can see. There are a lot of um, differences between a formal group and informal group and having a, a objective and having a different functions. OK, now let's look at the differences between group and team again. OK, um, so the common um, you know, differences between the group and team is between leadership, accountability, purpose, work products, communication, effectiveness, and work style, okay? So there are different. In a group, when we look at the group leadership, uh, we see that it's a strong uh, leadership. It's um, focused, um, the fo leader is focused, whereas in teams, we may uh, uh, see that there may be something, uh, a sharing of leadership. When we look at the accountability in groups, it's um, the individual accountability, but in teams, it's both individual and mutual accountability. But the purpose of the group uh, we can see that it's identical to the organization's mission, okay, but in the teams, it's uh, working towards a specific um, uh, purpose, specific mission, okay. Uh, when we look at the work products in groups, we find that individuals within the group deliver individual products, but in teams, they work together and um, deliver work as a whole, okay, they work, um, you know, uh, communication, when you look at the communication in groups, we find that it's efficient, we find it's time bound, uh, and we meet, if we find that the team meetings are held uh, properly, but when we look at the team uh, meetings, when we look at the team communication, we find that's it's open ended discussion and active problem solving, and so on. Okay, so there are differences, there are differences between groups and teams, and we should be aware of these differences, and uh, we try and uh, put these um, or distinguish these differences to what extent does they apply to us as team members or individual, okay? Now let's look when to work alone, uh, when to work alone in group or in teams. Um, if we find that um, people work uh, alone or in groups when the tasks are simple, uh, when there is um, sufficient cooperation or when minimum discretion is required, when fast decisions are needed, to be made when few competencies are required, um, you know, when an organization um, credits individuals for their operational output. Uh, but when we um, compare that to groups, we, um, we find that um, we need to build a team when it's um, highly complex tasks, okay? When we need to do a lot of um, problem solving, when we need to make decisions collectively and together, and there's a high level of um, uncertainty, we find that high level of commitment is needed, then this is when we build teams, uh, when there is a lot of competencies needed or a lot of uh, different skills are needed uh, to be had, uh, then we find that we need to build up teams, okay? Uh, when we need to look at um, uh, organization, uh, <clears throat> You know, when we look at the organization, how they reward their teams, we look at the results and strategy and building visions. Okay, so the, these are the, the differences uh, when you work to work alone and when to work in teams. Okay, the types of team, there are different teams, there are different types of teams. Now it depends, <clears throat> okay, it depends on uh, 
uh, you know, the the tasks okay to be performed and the level of uh, the tasks um, for example um, west uh, he is identified um, you know different um, key uh, you know dimensions of teams now he says it depends on the degree of permanence it depends on the skills uh, and depends its autonomy and influence now degree of permanence uh, means a team's life uh, span or lifetime can range from weeks to years, depending on the task, i.e. degree of permanence. Is it permanent? Is it going to last long or is it going to stay? The teams can be formed for a particular task or a particular uh, uh, time, for example, you know, there's no, um, there's nothing to say that, you know, this is a, a team for uh, so long and for, you know, it's going to be disbanded. No, it depends on the, um, on the nature of the work and depends on the the tasks or it depends on the need uh, it depends on the skill depends on the competence required it depend right and it depends the autonomy it depends on whether the task is a routine or strategic and at what extent um, the organization uh, needs that particular um, uh, a team okay peckham 1999 suggested that there are four types of problem solving or problem relating to how well it's uh, already understood and to what extent there is already a solution to this problem. He, he said there are four types of teams uh, that are needed to be formed. And he says there are problem uh, solving teams, there are creative teams, there are tactical teams, there are problem finding teams. Now Peckham um, you know, identifies these types of four types of teams. Now he, uh, he says here in this grid, okay, so the, the teams he's um, Put them into four uh, types of um, uh, four types of teams. Um, you know, when you have a, a problem, when you have a creative uh, team, and you have tactical team, and the problem finding teams. Okay, so you can see that problem uh, possible problem types, and uh, there are some kind of unknown solutions or known solutions. If there are known uh, known problems. Uh, but there are unknown uh, solutions. You need to have a problem solving um, team. When uh, there are unknown problems and unknown solution, you create um, a team uh, which is called a creative team. When you have a known problems and known solution, it's a tactical room uh, teams. And when it's unknown problems and known solution, you you know, say into a problem finding team or analytical team, okay? Uh, now, Tuckman and Jensen, 1977, right? Um, what they did is um, they formed into um, what's called the stage of development, team development. And it's one of the most um, well-known and, um, you know, uh, famously uh, described by Tuckman's model rather than Tuckman and the Jensen model. Okay, so uh, what this involves is um, it's a five stage development, team development. The first stage, uh, they say it's a forming stage. Okay, the second stage is a storming stage, the third stage is a norming, and the fourth stage is performing. And the last uh, or the fifth stage is the adjourning stage, okay? Now in the first stage, which is the forming stage, what happens is there is um, a bit of uncertainty. People uh, get together and, uh, you know, they, um, they get into uh, what you call pre-team stage where people are still working as individuals. They're not in teams. They are finding out who to work with. Maybe they are nervous. They are uncertain. They don't know what to do. They are, uh, you know, um, not sure uh, who to talk to, and so on. So they are forming into particular groups or particular individual and particular teams or something like that. The storming session or the storming stage. It it, it it's a, a kind of a stage uh, where there are, um, you know potential, i.e. this stage, the team becomes more aggressive and becomes challenging and becomes uh, uh, agreed to do something. Um, uh, maybe they form into kind of a rules and restrictions, okay? They storm, i.e. they get their ideas together, they get their rules together, they get their uh, guidelines together, you know, they get their um, acts together. 
and they um, you know you know go for it okay the norming stage is um, when the consolidating period in happens in which the team works out how to use the reason resources um, and have to apply it to the task how to apply the task how to apply the rules how to apply the policies of the particular group and so on so the norming stage i.e is a norm they, they get into a norm stage they you know and performing is where they start doing things where they will you know start to be better uh, and develop uh, into a team and they try and do the tasks in hand okay and a journey stage is where uh, you know the team uh, disbands the teams achieved something and um, um, you know they move on to other responsibilities uh, but sometimes this stage is known as the morning stage i.e you know uh, they move on to other tasks and so on okay so this is the um, the Tuckman's uh, model of team development okay uh, a quick uh, glance through the team development model now how um, to improve um, employee effectiveness in work teams is very important when we look at the uh, people when we work, look at the employees when we look at employees how can they work in teams and improve themselves or uh, improve their effectiveness um, and the reasons for uh, working in uh, teams and the effectiveness now team uh, work is um, you know very important because the um, the basic reason is that um, teams are efficient to work teams are uh, self-monitoring their team are uh, you know, work together with each other and they create uh, a lot of competition, healthy competition. They promote stronger working relationship and uh, the team work um, essentially to increase uh, the efficiency of employees in organizations and the organizations benefit. Okay, employees uh, become experts in particular tasks and they help each other, okay, to do their best. Um, uh, where they can to uh, take the working relationship at a high level and the benefits of this um, are reaped by the organization. So it's working in teams very much important and they can definitely improve effectiveness and they can improve the organizations. Okay, the GPRI model or which is the goal, roles, procedure and interpersonal relationship model uh, looks at these um, four um, you know, uh, four elements or four components. Now, goals is um, goals, roles, procedures, and interpersonal or GPRI uh, model, as it's known. Now, the goals model or the goals are the first uh, component of the model says <coughs> the, the goals must be clear, right? There must be, uh, uh, people should know what their goals are because they, if they don't know their goals, then there'll be disagreements, there'll be problems, there'll be disputes, there'll be issues, how to achieve and what to achieve and why should we achieve. And so therefore the goals must be determined absolutely clearly. The roles must be clearly defined, who's going to do what, you know, people need to know, uh, you know, what they are going to do, what they are responsible for, who they are responsible to, accountable to. And procedure means what are the uh, processes in place, uh, you know, which are uh, i.e. decision-making methods and workflow procedures and conflict resolution, i.e. all the procedures of communication. And interpersonal relationship means it's uh, uh, crucial for team members to develop their relationship with one another so that they are, uh, you know, so that they can get on with each other, they can communicate between themselves, they can trust and adapt to situations. And this GP our I model is uh, suits um, uh, teams who have lost their direction and need to find their way back into the swing of things. So this is very important. So they can, uh, if they've lost their swing, if they've lost their uh, uh, objective, then this model is quite good and they can get on, uh, they can use this model so they can get on with their um, objectives and achieve them and achieve efficiency. Okay, and we talked about the, the Tuckman's model. Uh, as it says, forming and storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. Now, this model um, is suited best for people who want to understand uh, the various stages of team development and uh, within the groups and, uh, you know, what they can achieve and how they can achieve, okay? 
So the other model is the Katzenbach and uh, Smith model. Now this model um, suggests that there are five levels of uh, teamwork. Now working group, mod working group, pseudo team, potential team, real team, and high performing team. Now working team means that the team members are operating as individuals and not um, uh, together, okay? So they are working as individuals, okay? Working group. Pseudo team means the team uh, members think they are operating as a team, but they, in fact, they are not um, working uh, in team, but they are working individuals again, okay? Um, they think they are, but they're not operating. Potential teams, now these people or the members are starting to work as a, a team, and they, uh, you know, they are performing. Uh, they are the real team, he says, is, uh, they think they have accomplished a shared goal with a common objective. And high performing teams are people or members who go beyond working together and are dedicated to each other's development. So um, this um, Carlson Bach and Douglas Smith um, you know, model suggests that there are different types of um, uh, levels of a teamwork, okay? So this is a five um, levels of teamwork that they have suggested, okay? Um, now, um, the following, okay, <clears throat> there are three factors. There are uh, making um, up the side of a triangle, which are very important, that how we can see the effectiveness of teams, our skills, accountability, and commitment. Now, the skills, uh, we can see the problem-solving skills or technical skills or interpersonal skills are very important in teams, um, and they should be uh, possessed in, in team members, and we can see if they are possessing these skills, we can see that the team is effective, okay? The team is uh, performing good. Accountability means that the uh, you know, people working in these groups um, are accountable um, you know, mutually so that the uh, objective is achieved, okay? And the tasks are done. And the commitment is dedication, i.e. The, um, the more dedicated you are, the more uh, quicker, and the more better and the more engaged you are and more focused you are to do your objectives, to clear your objectives, okay? This is very important. And these uh, three uh, elements, so the three components are best suited for teams uh, with members who are finding it difficult to transition from uh, an individual working mindset to a team working mindset, okay? Um, now, there are uh, when we look at the teams, we need to look at also, we need to look at the organizational culture. Now, organizational culture, um, as you may think, is um, different things for different people. Uh, and many uh, researchers have um, worked on this particular theme. We have uh, this on particular topic and everybody comes up with a bit of different, um, uh, you know, uh, assumptions of their culture. What is the culture and what do they think? And uh, there are a number of management thinkers who have studies uh, and they come to different um, classification of the culture. Now, we're going to look at the four persons, four people who have uh, looked at these um, uh, this term and come up with different types of uh, classification. Now, one of them is Edgar Schein. Uh, the second one is Hofstede. And third one is Charles Henby. And the fourth one is Jerry Johnson and Kevin Scholes. Now, they studied the organizational culture. They, they think um, organizational culture is is a kind of components, uh, influences, and drive, you know, the, the writers and the elements and the set of objectives and set of norms um, and set of behavior and so on. So let's look at the um, first one, Edgar Schein's. Now, Edgar Schein's uh, um, um, culture, he thinks um, the culture is, um, describes um, at three level, okay? He looks at culture, uh, from artifacts, he looks at culture from espoused values, and he looks culture from basic underlying assumptions. Now, by artifacts, he means um, the artifacts include something kind of uh, um, facilities, for example, offices, decor, furnishing, uh, dress code, for example, how people uh, interact with each other, and, um, you know, how do... Um, organizations um, perceive you as a 
organization okay so the artifacts are including like these offices decor the kind of outer bit okay and the espoused values means the the culture of an organization members uh, companies like slogans or mission objectives and mission statements and operational uh, creeds espoused values right and the basic underlying assumptions are unseen and on um, something unseen uh, something not consciously identified in every day interaction between organization members, uh, something like um, culture can become accustomed to attributes, for example, or reinforcing the invisibility of its existence. So these, these are under uh, other underlying assumptions that, um, you know, have uh, between uh, organizations and other people and its people inside. Okay, so he views, um, you know, organizational culture from a different perspective. When we look, when we look at the Hofstede's model, uh, now Hofstede um, uh, looks at um, uh, the organizational culture from a different angle. He thinks uh, that um, organizational culture is um, some kind of a means-oriented versus goals-oriented. What it means that the uh, you know uh, means that the attitudes to taking risks or contributing discretionary efforts. Uh, he thinks that some um, elements of uh, internally driven versus externally driven elements uh, of um, organizational culture are more important. Uh, he views organization culture from easygoing versus strict um, level of uh, different uh, discipline and control. He looks at uh, local versus uh, professional uh, viewpoint. He looks at um, you know different colleagues and uh, looks at uh, um, you know immediate colleagues, for example, and associate uh, themselves with a group of people and uh, practices based on their role. Okay, local versus professional, an open system versus closed system. He thinks that the cultural organizational culture is uh, the extent to which newcomers are accepted and the differences they bring. Um, are welcome, so open system and closed system. And he looks at the um, organizational culture uh, from employee-oriented versus work-oriented um, angle, i.e. the extent to which employees' well-being is prioritized and at the expense of the task or vice versa, okay? When we look at Charles Handy, he's a very famous um, writer on organizational culture. He is um, divide um, organizational culture into four types uh, of cultures. Uh, he, he describes uh, the organizational culture as power culture, um, role culture, task culture, and person culture. By role, uh, by power culture, he means there is a, a few people only who have a power at the top of the organization. They have full control and they, they run the organization from their own uh, viewpoint. The, the power is embarked on, uh, you know, from the center. Uh, the closed bureaucracy, the decision-making power lies within the few, okay? That's the power culture. The role culture means the authority is clearly um, lined up or given uh, to people with the defined structure, with a defined role, with a defined uh, hierarchical bureaucracy, and the power is derived from a person's position and little opportunity exists for expert power. I, this role, this power uh, gets from the power culture, right? The role culture, it depends on the power culture. And the task culture is the, the culture that when teams are formed to do particular tasks um, and <clears throat> they get their power from their expertise, from their, from their task, from their, you know, doing th something that they are expected to do or they are formed to do. And the person culture is, it um, uh, means, or Charles Andy says, it's, um, you know, uh, where individuals uh, pursue common organizational goals, individuals, um, you know, do their own, uh, have the common goals, organization goals, survival uh, can become difficult for this type of organization, okay? And there are all individuals believe themselves superior to organization. So the person culture means everything, everybody thinks he's very, uh, you know, he is the boss or he's very, uh, specialist or he is the you know uh, you know he is the man for example or he is the person who you know um, on who 
shoulder in the organization depends. So therefore, he, Charles Henry, links the organization structure to organization culture in different uh, sense of the word. Now, Jerry Johnson and uh, Kevin Skoll, they, um, they look at the uh, um, organization culture from another angle whereby they developed um, this cultural web, which contains six um, interrelated elements, whereby the first one is his stories, i.e. the past and present events, um, and people talked about um, inside and outside the company, these elements, okay? Uh, rituals and routines means the daily behavior and action of people that signals accepted behavior. There are symbols, uh, the visual representation, i.e. the logo, the office decor, and the formal or informal uh, dress code, for example. And the cultural web also contains an organizational structure, i.e. the structure defined by the organizational chart, unwritten lines of uh, power, you know, influence that one has over the other and so on. Control systems means, um, you know, the financial system, the quality control systems and the reward system, for example, and the power structure, uh, they say is the, the power structure means lies within a few people, uh, within a few, uh, you know, similar to power, uh, power culture. Uh, so it's, um, you know, very important that we um, understand that people, uh, have the greatest amount of influence decision. These people have the power structure. They have, they can influence the decision making of the organization in terms of power, in terms of operation, in terms of strategic direction. So therefore, uh, these people here they define the uh, cultural uh, uh, through the cultural web. They have defined another uh, way of uh, cultural organization. Okay. Um, when we look at the leaders, when we look at the people uh, who is, for example, in a lean, lean environment, um, they advocate um, discipline that teams must share to be effective rather than just establishing working group. And they distinguish working groups to a team in terms of um, working group being strong, being focused, being uh, uh, accountable, being committed, for example, uh, you know, being... Um, uh, efficient in terms of meeting and effectiveness or meeting it's effective, whereas the term uh, team, where is uh, uh, the team shares the com commitment again and the shared relationship or the shared leadership roles. And it's a specific team purpose, which uh, the team has to deliver and performance is a function of a collective work product and the time spent is open. So therefore, these are the distinctions. These are the, you know, um, Discipline. These these are the um, you know elements that um, you can say uh, being uh, effective rather than just establishing working. So these these people are certain. They uh, advocate certain disciplines that the team must share to be effective. Okay, <laughs> in order to be effective, the team must be having a good leadership and uh, commitment and specific teams and performance and uh, you know, with open discussion and uh, communication and so on, okay? Rather than working groups, okay? Now 2.2, let's look at the 2.2, uh, which is to distinguish between the influence leadership on groups and teams and on formal and informal groups. And we need to uh, distinguish between the influence of leadership. Now, very important, uh, what um, does the leadership uh, how do they influence uh, the teams and how do they influence the groups uh, in terms of um, meaning? Uh, we can compare the teams, we can compare groups uh, in terms of uh, meanings, in terms of size, in terms of their structure, in terms of their uh, relationship, uh, in terms of their formal group and informal group. So you can uh, compare them and uh, see how they differ. So for example, if you look at the formation, um, if you look at the formation of a formal group, it's a deliberate um, kind of a group, i.e. intentional. We created ourselves for our own purpose, whereas the informal group is not being created by us. It's not being created deliberately, intentionally, and willingly. It's come up to voluntarily, just come up uh, abruptly. It's just come up spontaneously. Uh, and the size, when we look at the formal group, is a formal group is a, a, a large group. Um, it, 
uh, in an informal group may, uh, you know, it may comparatively be smaller. Uh, when we look at the life of um, a formal group, it depends on the type of group uh, we're talking about, whereas the informal group, it also depends on the members. Uh, when we look at the structure of a well-formed group, it's a well-formed, as we seen earlier, it's clear line of demarcation, accountability, responsibility, structure, position, relationship, communication, whereas the, in the informal group, it is uh, not so clear, it's ill-defined though. The structures when you lose the responsibilities are uh, not defined and the communication style is not really clear and who's what. So it's uh, quite different terms. The informal and formal group are both completely different when we compare them, okay? And when we look at them, and uh, of course, uh, when we look at the leadership, influence of leadership, their results will be different, okay? Uh, their um, the leadership uh, and they will both be different in terms of results and so on. Okay, uh, because the teams uh, when you when you're looking for teams, they um, they are um, you know there for some kind of a purpose and of the communication and the clear input and the benefit. Whereas the other side is um, you know kind of a waste of time or hesitant and. Uh, hesitant to talk or hesitant to communicate and, you know, <clears throat> uh, without a uh, clear objectives, okay? So 2.2 basically uh, looked at uh, distinguish uh, between the influence of leadership, i.e. the better the leadership is, the better the results, the worse the leadership, the worse the results are, okay? So it depends on the kind of groups that we are talking about, informal or uh, formal group. And the lastly, 2.3, we need to look at the um, critical evaluation of the characteristics of an effective work group and team, i.e. Uh, to what extent, um, you know, these uh, some group work better than the other and how effective they are. Now with Charles and Belbin, Belbin's uh, role, we need to look at the Belbin's, um, uh, you know, theory here. And um, we need to look at the Belbin's um, roles, you know, he, has uh, different uh, roles. Um, each team brings different strengths and different weaknesses, okay? So if you look at these uh, team roles, now Charles uh, Belbin, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine role, he defines nine roles in a, in a team. Now, um, in a cerebral roles um, and people-oriented role, and action-oriented role. So he divides um, teams' roles into a band of three. So the first band is in a cerebral role, which contains plant, monitor, and specialist people. Um, in the second team, uh, which is the people-oriented um, roles, he divides them into coordinator, team worker, resource investigator role. The third band, action-oriented people, shaper, implementer, and completer uh, finisher. So he uh, gives the uh, strengths and weaknesses of each of these um, of each of these team members. So uh, let's look at the the cerebral role. And when we look at the cerebral role, the plant um, team member, for example, he or she is very imaginative. is very creative. He solve difficult problems, uh, but weaknesses they ignore. Uh, NC dental or they are too preoccupied to uh, communicate effectively uh, you know they are too busy to do other things for example um, when we look at the monitor evaluator person uh, the strength is that um, he is or she is uh, very sober very strategic uh, he sees different options or all options and judges them accurately whereas the weakness is is lack of uh, he lacks drive and he lacks ability to inspire others. He just gets on with his um, uh, with his work and doesn't care about as you know other uh, to lead others. Whereas if you look at the specialist, he is a person who is a self starter. He provides knowledge and skills. Uh, he is a um, weakness uh, in in terms of um, you know. Uh, technicalities, his weakness in terms of contributes um, on a narrow front. So this person, um, you know, is um, has got some strengths and some weaknesses. And so therefore he looks at the um, 
he looks at the other team members in terms of um, coordinator, team worker, resource investigator, whereas he says that coordinator is a, a confident person and he's uh, clearly knows what he's doing. He promotes decision making, uh, delegates well, but uh, weakness is that he can't often be seen as manipulative. He's manipulative, he offloads work to other people and uh, you know, miss maybe misuses other, yeah, though he's a coordinator, he tries to misuse other ability. Team worker, he says, very cooperative, very perceptive, very diplomatic, and listens and uh, builds upon his strengths, but indecisive in terms of uh, situation, he doesn't know how to decide, what to decide. A resource investigator is a very uh, person who is, um, explores new things, explore opportunities, develops contacts, but he loses interest, um, you know, very quickly uh, once, um, you know, initial enthusiasm has passed. <clears throat> so, and he looks at action-oriented people uh, in terms of shaper, implementer, and completer finisher. Uh, he gives them a sense of shaper, for example, this person is very dynamic, very, um, you know, challenging, and um, you know he comes over comes obstacles but he lacks uh, you know he lacks um, people's uh, feelings he doesn't understand uh, how to feel people he is open to vocation you know and he's um, uh, but he is very challenging implementer on the other hand he's very disciplined he says and uh, reliable and conscientious and efficient but is inflexible and slow uh, in, in his uh, new possibilities. Completer and finisher means he's a very uh, person who does things, um, you know, without error. He tries and uh, delivers on time and takes pain uh, to finish the job, uh, but he's reluctant to delegate. He's a not a good delegator. So in all in all, his Belbin's team roles are divided into nine roles. Um, banding of three three bandings okay um, so this is um, uh, quite uh, important where um, whereas he's um, evaluating the characteristics of an effective team and you can use these um, you can use these um, nine roles to um, see um, where your team members or where we are all at the these roles okay and we need to be able to uh, evaluate ourselves our character Ristics, um, in being a team. So he, because everybody's valuable in, in team, we need to make sure that overall the team is strong and overall um, everybody works together to achieve um, objectives we are being given. Uh, okay, but the tendency for a manager is to try and um, correct the weaknesses in an employee. Okay, so when he does that, uh, of course, the team will perform better. Okay, and the, you know, and so the Charles, um, uh, Belbin's uh, theory is very important in, uh, you know, looking at the team roles. Okay, um, you can use this, um, you know, you can use this um, uh, Charles theory in um, as an example by picking up your own organization and thinking uh, or relating the situation where you uh, were asked to be a part of a team and this team would have a, uh, you know, or should have ideally have nine members and then. You can identify the individual within the Belbin's role, for example, uh, you know, a uh, charity event or finance administration or other in, in, in any of these <coughs> roles, in any of these um, roles and see where, how you uh, performed, how well did you do or how well you didn't do. Okay, so um, <clears throat> uh, any question, any, anything that I have not made uh, clear? So what we looked at LO2, Basically, going back to um, LO2, we said we were going to uh, look at um, uh, LO2 by understanding the leadership, um, uh, how the leadership influences teams, individuals, and the organization. So we looked at the teams, the difference between team and members. We looked at the cultural differences, organizational culture, and we looked at the development of teams and uh, we looked at you know development of um, the teams uh, in terms of Tuckman's uh, model. We looked at um, Hofstede's model. We looked at um, Jerry Johnson's model. We looked at um, you know 
Belbin's uh, model uh, in terms of team um, roles, nine roles, um, and uh, you know development of uh, nine roles and team roles. Okay, and we have uh, seen that there are differences in teams and differences in uh, members and groups and individuals. Okay, so it's very important that you go through this um, and do a bit more reading. Um, we have lots of uh, references on uh, um, on this uh, lecture. You can look at Adair, um, 1983 Effective Leadership, uh, Bateman, Wilson, and Bingham, 2000 Team Effectiveness, Belbin's right? Management Team, Bennett for Organizational Behavior, Body Management and Introduction, and there is um, a website, www.open.edu, open learn, and uh, <clears throat> you can look at the different, um, you know, um, articles there, okay? Um, and you can look up business jargons, okay? Um, make sure that you um, have any questions, please drop me a line, uh, okay? Thank you very much for joining and hope to see you um, in LO3 um, and we'll catch up and, um, okay, hopefully we'll cover the whole syllabus within the time period. Thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.